Either way, let's start reviewing this guy. Okay, so chapter 18, as you probably saw in the video that your professor posted and today in lecture, it's all about your alpha hydrogens. So we know that alpha positions, those are the ones that are right next to your carbonyl group. Now, why are they so relevant? Because they're extremely aesthetic. Well, they're aesthetic. So they're gonna be relatively reactive. Okay, so the entire chapter is just gonna be dealing with alpha hydrogens. That's it, pretty simple. Now, before that, we have to talk about tautomers. Before you guys see this, what are tautomers? Which means? They like revert to each other, yeah. they kind of jump back. Yeah. Exactly, what are the two tautomers that you have to know for this class? The keto form goes to which other forms? Enol is one of them. What about the middle one? Keto. No, that's the first one. That's the keto form. Keto form, blank, enol. Enolate. Oh, okay, okay, right. Don't forget about those guys. You might get a you might get a question asking which one is the enolate of X ketone or something like that. But now we can go back. Actually, again, let's give that. What was the definition of resonance? How is tautomerization different from resonance? Exactly. So what's the difference with tautomerization? No, they they have um their structure is completely different versus sorry, moving pi bonds. You're moving pi bonds in both. Yeah. But for tautomerization, it's more like a reaction. Yeah. Resonance, remember, I'm not breaking anything. All I'm just shifting around. So keep that in mind, very important. Now, the next thing that you guys should know is that two things can happen whenever you use a base or an acid as your catalyst. Like we've seen that before from chapter 16, actually. Let's start reviewing. Yeah. Acids, what do they do? They, they, they make the electrophile more electrophilic. What about bases? It's just the opposite about what nucleophiles. So nucleophiles become more nucleophilic. Okay, we're happy. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the base form. The base form, again, we're just going to be focusing on alpha hydrogens for the entire chapter. It can be NaOH, NaH, any base that you want. It doesn't really matter. But whatever base you're provided with, that's going to be attacking your alpha hydrogen, again, because it's acidic. And then we have technically two different alpha hydrogens on the left and on the right, but why specifically am I attacking the one on the right? It's more substituted, therefore it's gonna be more stable at the end because after I attack and take away that hydrogen, the electrons that make up that bond between carbon and hydrogen, they're shifting to make a double one. And then of course, the electrons go up to the oxygen so we don't break the poor octet. So the deprotonated version is basically your enolate. So, Pretty simple question so far. Pretty simple mechanism. Okay, now, after your base took that hydrogen, now we have the conjugate acid. So now, our oxygen minus in the enolate is gonna be attacking it. So it can get protonated and give us the enol form. Okay, and remember, everything is gonna be in equilibrium. So they're gonna be constantly changing between each other, basically. So mechanism-wise, it's not too bad. But a question. All good. Makes sense. It seems like it. Now for acids, like we saw in chapter 16 and 17, they make the electrophile more electrophilic. So it makes sense that our oxygen in the carbonyl is first getting protonated, so we can make it more electrophilic. Then after that, we do the same exact process as we did with the previous reaction with the base catalyst. We attack our alpha hydrogen shift the electrons around to make a double bond, and then kick up the electrons so we don't break the octet. And that's how we get the enol form. Now, main difference is that bases create both enolate and enol. Acids only create the enol form. Okay, so very important for you guys to remember that. Questions? Not too bad. Pretty simple. Okay. Look the word Bless you. 
Okay, so the next concept is something that you guys should probably remember from chapter six. A racemic mixture. What was the definition of a racemic mixture? 50-50 what? In antimers, exactly. Yes. Non-superimposable. Don't forget. Okay, so in antimers, they all deal with chiral centers. So, of course, if you see resin position, we're going to be talking about chiral centers. Now, remember, it's all about the alpha position. So, if you have a question asking you which one is going to undergo resin you have to identify the alpha position that has a chiral center. Okay, you need a chiral center in the alpha position. And the other requirement is that you need one alpha hydrogen. Okay. So that's why C was the only answer because this one has four different groups and one alpha hydrogen. Questions? Pretty simple, it's just identifying car centers and that's it. So it has to have a hydrogen? Yes. You need an alpha hydrogen and it needs to be a car center. Okay, we're good so far. Okay. Now, this portion was all about a review. And actually, before I show you that, acidity. We use RDO and or cardio to determine if something is really acidic or not, right? How do we use RDO or cardio? They're the same thing. Charge. For charge. What kind of charge? Um, Positive means what? More acidic. Okay, what about the other one, Adam? The more electronegative atom makes it more acidic. Like if it's, it depends on if it's like pure neutral. Or group. Then what's the next aspect? We have C, A. What about resonance? More resonance, more acidic. What about the rest? Inductive, inductive effects. What about inductive effects? It's like how you have HF, HCl, HBr, I, where when it donates the proton, what can stabilize that charge better? More electronegative than the stabilizing. So it's basically all about dipole moments around it. The more dipole you have around it, the better it is. What about the last one, the O? The closer to S. The closer to S, the more acidic you are. SP, then SP2, and last one, SP3. Can you explain it? So if it's closer to S? If it's mostly just S. Okay. S I think that like S is a circle, and it's yeah. kind of like, Hydrate stations is basically a combination between the orbitals, right? So SP, it's basically equals amounts of S and P. And then as we move on up the hydrate station, then the ratio is going to be different. So, yeah. You don't have to worry about the technicality. Yes. Triple bonds, double bonds, single bonds. We're good? Sure. Okay. That doesn't sound That doesn't sound sure. Okay, so of course we were just reviewing a little bit of ARIO, um, how to use it, and then I didn't write it here, but you might get questions with pKa values. So based on the pKa, how do we know that something is really acidic? What's the trend? So we're pKa, exactly. So we're the pKa, the more acidic you are. What's the relationship of the strength between your acid and the conjugate base. The weaker the conjugate base is. Please remember that. You may get a question on that. And then concept wise, that was the last main thing that we have to talk about. The rest of them are just going to be pure reactions. And the names, they're going to sound very similar to things that we've done before in many chapters. Okay. Let's just start with the very first one over here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So for your dehalogenation, remember, acids and bases, they are going to create different tautomers, right? Yeah. Acids, what do they create? They, oh, they don't take enols. Only enols. Bases. Enolates. Enolates and enols. Yeah. Okay. So again, all about the alpha hydrogens. So of course, if it's a halogenation, our reagent needs to be just pure halogen. So Br2, Cl2. We've seen those guys even in chapter 15 or in orgo one even. So how do we, how are we gonna differentiate the different halogenations? Um, I guess you can based on the initial structure. It's gonna be based on the initial structure. So again, exactly. So again, look at the what is provided in its entirety, not just look at the reagent, because if you just look at the reagent, you can do a few reactions. Yeah. Okay, so look at the combination of things. Okay. So we have our dear base. We saw this at the very beginning. Bases are going to abstract my alpha hydrogen. We shift the electrons to make the double bond, kick up the electrons to the oxygen. Of course, we form the enolate form because we use the base. And then after we have our enolate, now we can reform the double bond. So we're going to have a carbonyl again. And then the electrons that we use for the double bond are going to be uh, the nucleophile. So they're going to be attacking one of those bromines and attaching it in the alpha position. And that's it. Now, the main thing that you have to know is that basis, every time that you add a halogen, is going to promote another halogenation, meaning that you're going to be replacing all of the alpha hydrogens only with bases. Now, for acids, the mechanism is slightly different. Now. For acids, we know that we have to create the enol form, okay, but it's going to be different from a base because they're not going to promote poly substitution, let's say, okay, that was the main difference. And then practically, I just gave you a little chart saying the main differences, so you guys can have that as a reference. But questions on halogenation, it's a pretty simple reaction. You don't have to do the full mechanism. What was the shortcut that we talked about? So the key part for this chapter is going to be just replacing alphas, alpha hydrogens. It's all about switching them up. Questions on halogenation? Zoom out or zoom in? Are we ready? No? It seems like yes.
Okay, now, your heliform reaction. Before we even look at the mechanism, there's gonna be a few requirements for that one, okay? So first of all, you need a base that's in excess. If you don't have excess, you can proceed with a heliform reaction, okay? That's the first sign. Now, second is gonna be that you are gonna start with a ketone, but you only need an alpha position with three alpha hydrogens available. So on the other side, we don't need any hydrogens. Otherwise, the reaction can get byproducts and we don't want that. Okay, so again, one side needs to be fully occupied, no alpha hydrogens at all. The other one needs to have three alpha hydrogens. Okay, that's the requirement. So pretty much it's always gonna look like this or what else could we have instead of that benzene group? What could replace it? Okay, so we have our alpha position with the hydrogens in here. Then the other alpha position, it doesn't need to have any hydrogens available. So instead of drawing a benzene group sticking out of the carbon, mm -hmm. what can I draw? I, I would assume like there are like It has to be like something that has like, like a pi bond and like a bond. Hybrid. Yeah, right. Just like a poly substitute. I mean, or like an ion. I said like it's a rule. Okay, yeah, there's a few options. Yeah. And the answer is? I was just thinking about the chicken foot, a terbutal group. That's probably the most common thing that you're going to see on the exam. But you guys still came up with pretty good alternate options. So, okay. yeah. The little chicken foot. But yeah, same. Okay, so after you have your requirements, now we can proceed with the actual mechanism. We have a base, so we know what we have to do in the very first step. We're just going to be attacking one of those alpha hydrogens. Okay, we attack them. We're going to shift the electrons to make a double one, and then we kick up the electrons to the oxygen so we don't break the octet. So, so far, we're just forming our dear analyte. Very simple. It's what we've seen so far in all the reactions. Then after that, same thing as your halogenation. We're gonna reform the carbonyl, and then your double one is gonna be the nucleophile attacking your halogens, which means that now I have a bromine in my alpha position. Now, this would be the product for a normal halogenation, but remember, we have access of the base. So alpha hydrogens, again, they are aesthetic, so we're gonna keep reacting with them. So we're gonna repeat the whole process once yeah. more, and then we're gonna repeat actually the process one more, <laughs> because we wanna get rid of all of the hydrogens. So yeah, the, that part gets very repetitive. So again, but it's the same exact mechanism. Your base is just gonna deprotonate your alpha hydrogens. We make the enolate. The enolate just yeah. attacks your bromine. Okay. That's it. That so, the, yeah, all the hydrogens just get replaced like magic. Yeah, yeah that's that it. Hard. Yeah, let's just say magic happened. That's it. But okay, after our magic, once we have all of the hydrogens replaced with halogens, now. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, so now this part is gonna look somewhat similar to chapter 17. Remember, 17 was all about carbonyls and replacing the leaving groups, right? In this case, we have a carbon groups on both sides. They're not quite leaving groups, but once this carbon with the bromines goes away, that's gonna be a pretty good leaving group. But let's see how the mechanism is gonna play out first. So remember again, base, we have more than enough of it. So the base is gonna be attacking this time as a nucleophile and it's gonna be attacking the carbonyl. Nucleophile attack, it gets connected there. That's why we have this oxygen here, that alcohol group in here. And then of course, electrons go up to the oxygen. So that's why we have the oxygen minus. Now, after that, you guys should pretty much see how the uh, mechanism is gonna play out. It's what we've seen before. Yeah, so we reform our carbonyl and then we finally kick out our leaving group. Which is 
all the bromines, the current with all the bromines. That's your halo form. Well, basically, your end product is a carboxylic acid. It's always a carboxylic acid, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the mechanisms are quite repetitive. Yeah. So I wouldn't recommend wasting all of your time doing them. Kayla? Yes. And that's going to be your little byproduct. That's your, your halo form. And now you're all caught up with the past two sessions. Stop. That's where we stop. They're a byproduct. They're right here. Don't worry. Hmm? The next stuff, yes, you do. The Okay, so this one, of course, it has a very long name. I'm not even going to bother to say it out loud. It's just either my students call it the hell reaction or like in tutoring we said, the funky reaction. So either way, funky, hell reaction, whatever you want. It has a pretty long name that I'm not going to pronounce. So So yes, that's the main difference. Remember, keep in mind that so far we're basically repeating the same portions of the reagents. We're just switching either the initial molecule or whether we have access or not. In this case, we have a new reagent, PBR3. What was PBR3? Thank you. So, what happens with protecting your exam? You leave the proton, the non proton, in the. You replace the Exactly. You're going to replace the alcohol oh, okay. for whatever halogen you were given. So in this case, we're just going to have. Okay. Okay, so we already used the protecting group. Now we have the bromines and the water left over. What do we think is gonna happen at this point? Remember, the process, the mechanism, it repeats itself. So uh, what happens? So it's not halogen. Uh, it's acid. Not quite. Uh, it's halogen. At this point, it looks very similar to your halogenation. So what happened mechanism-wise? Hint, it's going to be with water. We're not touching the bromines yet. Oh. Remember, this chapter is all about alpha, alpha hydrogens. We do have alpha hydrogens. Okay, now. It is secondary. Now, in this case, we have water. Water can be both an acid or a base. In this case, it's just going to be a base, Mickey. There you go. So base takes away alpha hydrogen. Exactly. We make the double bond and kick up the electrons so we can form the dear analyte. So now we have O minus. And then double bond. This is your analyte. Now you have the halogens left. It should be even out now. So mechanism wise, what happens? Well, the we we form the double bond, so it's supposed to be halogen. And then the double bond goes to the goes to halogen. And we basically replace the alpha with the bromine. Exactly. So we have bromine in here. Yeah. They kind of get the water from more. Both ways. Yes. Okay, so far, questions. It's pretty much the mechanism that we saw before. So far, we're good? Yes. Okay. Now, it's not as simple as that. 
So our end goal is to end up with a carboxylic acid. Right now, what kind of functional group do I have? What's the name? No, it's like an aldehyde or with a BR. Oh, no, acid cell. Acid You're close. You're so close. I think I heard a mix of it. Acyl Acyl halide. Beautiful. Please remember those names. You're going to get asked questions on the ranking of your carbonyls. So, honestly, yeah, that's hard. So. Either way. Okay. So, water. Water is your solvent. So, that means that technically you have a lot of moles of it available for the reaction. So, water is going to come again now. Similar to what we saw before, our base can be also a nucleophile. In this case, water might not be the best nucleophile, but we're going to make it work. So I guess it attacks the, um, the carbonyl again. Beautiful, exactly. We attack the carbonyl, meaning that it gets connected there, and, and then you're... kick up the electron so you don't break the pore octet in so there. The is the so we have this little guy. Right now, it's still water. Okay, so we have this guy. What's going to happen at this point? Um, does the become a better reagent? How? You said, how does the BR become a better reagent? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Let me do that. I'll need to ask you, like, um, well, so how long? I know the oxygen reform is like, Okay, so Juan said to make the bromine a better leading group. Okay, that's one of our problems. What's the next problem that we have in that molecule? What's something that we want to fix in there? We have a positive charge in there. How do we get rid of it? And at the same time, how do we make it a better leading group? <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> We put an easy bromine. Okay. So that was close. <laughs> Intermolecular proton transfer. So now we can pretty much see how the mechanism plays out. Reform, kick out. Mm hmm. Now you do form the pipeline. You have your carboxylic acid. And then your. The HVC, exactly. So yeah, we have that beautiful reaction in there. Questions on this reaction? Yeah. No, no questions, that's okay. And then we just have one more reaction and we're officially done. Alkylation, which is actually easier. So it shouldn't be too bad. I like this reaction. Oh, and is it because it's bulky that it will only attack the alcohol? We're still doing that. Um, that's the one that is. Uh, L1. L1. We're going to talk about the L1. Okay, are we ready for the alkylation now? Okay, we need a few more minutes. That's okay. LDA is an amine. It's an amine. Wait, you said the O to the N, right? No, LDA, if you guys were talking about that once, yeah, it's no, an amine. Lithium diisobutyl amine. Yes. No, you said amine. No, no. I don't know what you said. Because it breaks apart. You said methylamine. Methylamine is an N2O. And single bonds. D, carbonyl. Don't confuse those, please. Oh my god. How does an MI look like? 
Very important uh, to remember those names, guys. Very important. Okay. Are we good for alkylation now? Are we good? Okay. Alkylation, very simple reaction. Okay, so main reagents that you have for your alkylation. So alkylation, obviously, we're going to need... Obviously, we're going to need an alkyl halide. Okay, so that's at your very bottom. But remember, we always need some sort of base or acid as a catalyst. We have a base in this case. So what happens? Which one? Left or right? Why right? Because it's more substituted, so it's going to be more stable. Yes. We're assuming, so this whole chapter, we're just assuming that the alpha hydrogen gets taken out. We're not talking about, you know, um, partial positive under the ketone type. No. no. In this case, your alpha hydrogens are going to take priority over the dipole moment in there. Really? That'll make yeah. it more electrophilic. Yes. Okay. So we take away the hydrogen, shift the electrons. Pick up the electrons, and we create, what's the name of the molecule that I'm going to create? Analyte. Beautiful. Yes, you guys have to remember the names. Mm -hmm. So that guy is your alkyl halide. Alkyl is just carbon chain, halide, any halogens you have. So at this point, alkylation. We've seen that before. What was the main gist with alkylation? What do we add? Just a pure carbon chain. Okay, now let's go back to chapter 15. When we did an alkylation, what happened? The, uh, the, the halogen needs the facility and the carbon. Rearrangements. That's the key portion. You can do rearrangements. Now, in this case, because you have a small base in general and everything is less directly hindered, we follow an SN2 mechanism. SN2 mechanism, so they form carbocations. No. no, so that means no rearrangement. So whatever carbon chain you were presented with, you're gonna copy that same exact one. Okay, so mechanism-wise, we form the double bond and then pi electrons do the backside attack, kick out chlorine, and voila. Oh, so we're basically in a long. Yes. Is that a chiral pattern? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Questions on alkylation, on the normal alkylation. Okay. No. Keep in mind, in this case, we were using a carbon chain that was only composed of two carbons, one oxygen. Everything's linear. There's no branching. It's not bulk at all. It's pretty small. Pretty simple. That's why we attacked the more circularly hinder alpha hydrogen. Now, things change when LDA comes into play. Now, LDA is that guy that I just drew on the board. Okay? You don't have to memorize the, the actual structure, but what you have to know is that LDA, it's a bulky boy, okay? It's a bulky base, specifically. A big boy. <laughs> so, since it's bulky, that guy is not going to be able to attack the best side available, okay? It's a little too, too chunky to get in there, yeah. So, that means that if you see LDA, you're only attacking the alpha hydrogens, that are less directly hindered. So in this case, which one am I going to attack, left or right? Right. The right one, exactly. Yeah. So what's going to be the product out of those options? Well, what? It's, it's like, yeah. like, what? what? <laughs> she says, bro. Right. Damn, she just died. Uh, right. How do you do that? To the left, to the left, to the right. <laughs> Okay. 
We said C. It's not C. <laughs> what else can we discard? B, there's no carving at all, yeah, so we're going to discard that automatically. E, can we discard that one? I yes. Think so. yes, no carving at all, so we're between A and B. Which one is the answer? Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll it's, too obvious. Yeah, why, why is B even an option? Where does it it's just there to distract you. <laughs> it's just there to distract yeah, you. That's I, it. I to say A, but I thought that was No, it, honestly, it's going to be easy. This portion, at least. So, yeah, and now we're officially done with chapter 18, guys. We officially covered everything for this class. But we're going to start reviewing, okay? So, keep showing up to SI, okay? Keep showing up to SI. On Wednesday and Friday, we're going to start reviewing. And we're going to talk about what you guys need for the final review so I can tailor it better for you guys. So, damn, good luck with genetics. So, for normal, like, like, let's say, like, uh, not so bulky one, it's just basic, like, big cow, like, they're still the most substantial one. And then you can say, like, this. It goes, you have to look like a small one. Yeah, if you go from the bulky one, yeah, it's not gonna be able to fit in there. Yeah, exactly. So, for me, it would work. It was it would work with any other base. Yeah, but since it's LDA, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work at all. It can work. So that's good for the base. That's it. Okay. No problem. It's funny.